Hello, David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. All right, if you take any Bond fan and ask them what their number one Bond fantasy is, chances are it's going to be, I wanna be in a Bond film. And listen, if I'm gonna speak selfishly, it's always been my dream to be in a Bond film. Well, some people live their dreams and somebody live their dreams. And the two individuals I have here we're extras in a Bond film, and we're going to pick their brain. By the way, not just any Bond film, one of my favorites. I'm fully decked out in Quantum of Solace gear from the watch to the jacket to the shirt. I'm ready to talk Quantum of Solace with my dear friends, Remard and Anders. Remard and Anders, welcome to the show. Thank you, David. Hi, <laughs> David. Now, Unfortunately, because my audience is not all fanatical James Bond fans like we are, we've got to introduce you to everybody before we get into this amazing story. So Anders, can you tell everybody a little bit about you and, and obviously from Sweden with Love? Yes, exactly. I, I'm the strong force behind From Sweden with Love, which has just entered its uh, 17th year online. Oh my gosh. And which has brought me so many incredible memories and experiences and good friends like you guys and uh, the best thing I ever did. So, so uh, bond-wise, I, I hope I should say. <laughs> agreed, yeah. agreed. It's amazing. I mean, you, you know, even though it's from Sweden with love, you become a global presence, you know, by uh, friends, community, celebrity, and across the Bond franchise. So it's great to have you here. And Remert, Remert, how, how would people know you in the Bond community? Uh, people might be from uh, people might know me from the James Bond Lifestyle website that I started oh. in 2005, um, uh, almost uh, 16 years ago now. Uh, so a little bit newer than uh, than Anders' website. And yeah, I sometimes um, you know if I hang out with you a lot, <laughs> you can see me there. And um, yeah, uh, on the Instagram, of course, social media. So um, yeah. It's been a great pleasure. I know Anders already also a long time. We met uh, first at the Casino Royale premiere, I think in uh, 2006 already. So uh, yeah, we all go away. Back. And, and you, you lived in Gothenburg uh, when you launched the site, didn't you? Actually, it's true. Yeah, I just moved to, to Gothenburg in Sweden uh, when, I, yeah. when I launched it, right? Yeah. All right. Small so world. we, it's, well, it is. And it's so funny too, because everybody, you know, it's this almost incestuous community <laughs> where we really know, all know each other, but you guys have something very unique and that is, this story and I remember Anders getting in touch with me and immediately I saw the tagline and I'm like it, it's going to be called extra extra which is what you scream when you have newspapers <laughs> because literally I'm talking to two extras how does this happen did you do you both have the same story of an overarching casting call or who wants to jump in well, I, I can go first if you want you go first yeah well uh, first of all I, I got to I got to whisper for, from the production from, from somebody I know who works on the production. And he said that they needed lots and lots of extras for this big scene in Austria. And uh, I don't think, I, I don't recall I ever mentioned that I wanted to become an extra to, to this person. But anyway, he, 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 he tipped me off and um, I got in touch and I tried to find out some, some information. And obviously they needed thousand extras for this big opera scene in, in Austria. And, but uh, it, it wasn't enough to just sign up. You, you had to go to Austria. You had to go to Bregenz. You had to show yourself and fill out some forms that you're not a criminal or, or something, something like that. And they took a photo of you. And uh, well, basically that was it. It was just, it took like, well, I remember it was a long queue actually. It took like two hours to queue up, but the, the, the actually registration process was pretty quick. Um, and then nothing really happened for, because then everybody got home, got back home. I flew back to Sweden. Uh, I don't remember meeting you there, Remit. I think I knew you were there, but because uh, I was there with a Swiss friend of mine. Uh, anyway, I went back to Sweden and uh, I recall, I don't think I heard anything for about one or even two months because I think this was in January 2008. So, and I believe in March. Uh, I was sitting at work and I just received a call basically. And they said, are, are you still interested in, in, in becoming an extra for this Bond movie? And I said, yeah, sure. And then, well, then you, you better prepare yourself and you get ready to come to Brigance in, in, um, in April, end of April, beginning of May, I think it was the same year. So 
Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a similar story exactly. It started in, in January. I, I got my first, I looked at my emails just for this uh, uh, video. And it started in uh, January 4th. I got the first email from a, a Bond fan uh, in, in, in Switzerland, also a Swiss fan of mine. Reiner Hauser, he, he, he runs like a local ninja group there. He's a, he's a, he's a sort of Bond fan more under the radar. Uh, great guy. He emailed me that this was coming up, this casting, like you were just saying. And um, so I got prepared. And then uh, I think a few days later, even um, basically two weeks later, I flew out already to, to Bregenz as well, just like Anders. Meet, met up with him in Zurich, went to Bregenz, stayed there two days because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take. Um, and yeah, we had to go to this, uh, this corn market uh, theater, stand in line with like hundreds of other people. Um, most of them are obviously actually not Bond fans, interesting enough, uh, just people from, you know, local people and some crazy people like us that just flew from all over the place, you know, um, uh, a lot of uh, Swiss Bond fans turned out later and uh, Ger Germans and stuff, but it's true. I, I don't remember seeing you there, Anders. Uh, I, I, I went with my friend Reiner. Uh, we had the same experience, went in really quick. Mm -hmm. I brought my own clothes. I even uh, wore them, I think, in, in that for the photo. I, I got a tuxedo just for this casting. Um, okay, uh, style, okay. Styled it a bit after Casino Royale, a tuxedo, brought that because that was one of the things you had to fill in on the form, like if you have your own clothes or not, and if you have a, a certain car that they might use. So, and I filled, of course, yeah. also in, um, because I was living at, in, in, in the Netherlands at the time, um, and of in Antwerp, actually, sorry, Belgium. And basically, I came over um, uh, just for that. And later they said, like, oh, are you, are you sure you want to come for this? You know, come in, it's, it's kind of far away. And uh, but of course, you know, as a bond fan, like, yeah, of course, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but so, yeah, it's true. We, we didn't hear anything. Like it was a short um, uh, sort of casting thingy, you know, but then it, it, uh, I have a record here that I, I heard on 11th of April um, that I was selected basically. And the filming would start like two, two and a half weeks after that, you know, so it was a very short notice. Um, and my friend even only got uh, heard it like 10 days later. So he heard it like one week before the actual shooting that he was cast. So. I have yeah. questions. Yeah. I have so many questions, even just about that first casting thing. All right. So, because mm -hmm. again, I wasn't there. I can't fill the gap. The audience wasn't there. But so you you arrive, you know, this is a casting call. It's not the actual filming. They're not going to take you on a set. Um, do they ask you questions or are they literally just looking at your physical looks? Like, are you are you are you supposed to look a certain part, if you will? I, I didn't get that impression, but they, they did ask uh, quite a few questions, I recall. I mean, you know, like, so who, who do, do you know anybody on the production? They were very keen to know if you know somebody. Hmm. It was because I think, I think for references maybe or something. Um, but like Raymond said, one observation was that it wasn't, I didn't really see many Bond fans, which I would expect to see actually. I, it was more uh, the general public. So. I assume that was the the appeal of James Bond coming to Briggins that opened the doors for everybody. I think it would be similar if like a Mission Impossible uh, movie casting would take place in your town, like you would just go because it's in your town, you know? So it was similar to this, like all these people from that town or nearby just came over because it's something cool, you know, even if you're not a particular fan of that you know, franchise or movie. Um, exactly. This of course is even more famous, so a lot of people showed up. Apparently, I don't even know how many, I think, 4,000 people showed up, uh, I read in, uh, in one of the articles. So yeah, was, I think so, yeah. But it was a multi-day process as well. So it was not just all on the same day, because it was a very small theater where they did the casting. But so about the questions that they asked, I think um, it was, uh, like I said, about like, if you have a car, if you have certain clothes, mm -hmm. and um, it was a very short thing, but it was not really that personal. I, I almost think it was a form, basically, mostly. Uh, you went to one person, give the form, maybe so they, they asked maybe one or two things, but then quickly you had to go to a headshot place where they took a headshot and it was out. Like it was literally very yeah. short once you got into the actual uh, theater uh, where the casting took place. So it was it was a really brief process and they just, um, you know, got the basic information, I guess, that they wanted to know. Was um, there any signage anywhere, any clue that this was a Bond film? And was there anything where you're like, all right, I don't know if I'm going to get called back. I need to get a souvenir even if it's a napkin from this mm -hmm. event, you know, did, did anything like that go through your mind? Absolutely, because I, I think you, you I, I kept all the pay, I, mean, I kept, of course, everything I got from there, but uh, and I'm sure Remit did as well, because there were lots of paperwork, mm. uh, which I still have, you know, it, it said it said clearly, you know, Bond 22 and... Uh, it said B, B22, yeah. So, I mean, for some B, people, it might not yeah. even be that, that clear, because it says B22 Limited, which is, you know, for, for the regular person on the street, that doesn't mean much, you know? Exactly. No, I prob probably only you and I and a few others who actually <laughs> got the connection to that. But that's right. That's so cool. All right. So, so, all right. You get the email. You both got an email. 
when you're reading the email, do you have to read it like three times because you can't believe that you're going to be an extra in a Bond film? I mean, what goes through your mind emotionally? Well, I mean, of course, I was I was excited. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sure Remit was as well. But uh, on the other side, I tried to, to, to be realistic because um, I remember just just before going to Briggins, I actually called up Guy Hamilton, who, who became a good friend of mine. And I said to Guy, do, do you have any advice for me? I'm going to be an extra on this Bond movie. And he said, well, make sure that you know the second unit. Uh, so, sorry, make sure you know the second assistant director. And I didn't really know what to, I didn't really understood, understand what he meant. But coming to Briggins, I knew exactly what he, what he meant. Because if you know the second assistant director, and if he knows you or she knows you, uh, then you, you are likely to be, uh, you're likely to get a good scene where you, where you actually are seen. Because the second assistant director, he, he runs the floor, so to speak. The, the main director usually sits behind, and, but the second assistant director and the first assistant, they are more active on the floor. Uh, luckily, I knew, I knew the second assistant director, <laughs> but, but we'll come to that later. That's amazing. That, that, was, that was good advice from Guy, actually. It was a very good advice. That was amazing. And did it, did it say in the email for you, Anders, uh, what part you would play, what you needed to bring? Did it have that or no? Uh, well, I think it said um, op opera member or something. I don't remember. I, I, didn't, I didn't double check the papers now. But I think it said something, but it, not, nothing very specific. Like, I, think, I think we knew we were going to be um, basically opera visitors. That's also why yeah. we got the tuxedo. Because I, like I said, I got the tuxedo already in January before the casting even. Because I think it was already sort of clear that was going to happen. Um, but then, um, yeah, I guess when, when you hear the news, I, I was really excited, of course, as well. Mostly also because they said already sort of the days that you were probably going to be on set, you know, and so they were going to be there for about 10 to 12 days, I think, in Austria, the actual production team. So I booked that whole time just to make sure that, you know, I was there the whole time, enough time to be in the night. And so in the first email I got, I think it already said um, the dates, uh, I think it was four days that they uh, scheduled me in which is already great news because there was some people that only got one night or something. So that was the, really exciting as well, where it's like not only am I going to be there on set, um, but it's going to be four nights, probably. Um, I think it turned out to be four or five in the end as well. Maybe they changed it around a bit. Um, but that, that was really exciting. So the first thing I did, I was really excited. Uh, I wrote to that other guy that I came with. And he was like, oh, I didn't hear you. Oh, no, you know, but we, we were uh, joking. And luckily, he like, like 10 days later, he got the, the message as well. Um, and I'm not sure if, if um, yeah, I knew from many people before I went, if they were going there. I think there was some chatter online, um, but it was not that huge. I think only when we got there, we started to more uh, meet up with everybody, you know, the German fan club, Swiss bond club was there uh, yeah. with lots of people, even if they were not in a in not cast and some other uh, fans from, uh, you know, uh, Natalie from, from Belgium was there. Um, there. There were some people from- It was like a country. party then. But it was mostly German speakers. I must, I think, you know, most, most of them were from either Austria, Switzerland or um, Germany. Wow. Yeah. There, there were, there were people from Germany. I remember Switzerland and us and, um, not, not really anywhere else. I, 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 I at least what I remember. But um, no, it, it's like you said, Robert. It's, it's we, we didn't actually know exactly what was going to happen until we actually came there. Because when we came there, I remember we had to go into the opera house because that's where the where the off production office was, and we had to to register again that we we were present and ready to ready to shoot. <laughs> So, I remember. I, I remember also going going there. I came there, um, you know, flew to Zurich, took a train to Bregenz, and when I arrived, I walked to my um, first hotel. I stayed in two hotels, first in a sort of youth hostel, and I walked there. And I saw when I walked there, the youth hostel was almost right next to that the whole theater area. And, and I walked there, and I saw already the gates were set up already, and you know, with like electronic um, sort of entry thingies, like in an airport. And I saw it, so I walked to the to the youth hostel with my bags, and I instantly just got in my tuxedo, even though I wasn't scheduled to filming that day and i just walked back to that entrance and i was just you know in my whole tuxedo i was like okay you know i'm, I'm you know i'm here if you need me you know like i'm not scheduled for today but <laughs> and so they were kind of confused and they were like oh, okay so they let me sort of through the first gate onto the whole uh, theater plaza and then this main guy maybe the guy you're talking about i'm not sure he turned out to be one of the guys that really was organizing the whole thing he came up to me and he was like oh what are you doing here because i didn't have a card because you get a card uh, normally then for every day you go there 
it was like, well, I'm here, you know, I got my stuff. So if you need me, I can just, you know, stay here all day. No problem. You know, <laughs> but he was like, well, yeah, thank you. But you know, no, no. So he just slowly pushed me out again, you know? So that, that was, that was my first, that was my first 15 minutes uh, basically in Bregan. So I was just like, well, I'm, this is right here. I'm going to just walk in and see what happens. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So no, this... But it, it was, it was way too much or it was way it's too well organized to, to do that kind of, uh, that kind of stuff. Cause it's basically like a whole check-in, you know, process yeah. every day with like a like a gate and a card and your id and stuff and you know so yeah the, the security was very strict i remember yeah. we had to go yeah. through it. nobody came in there no unless you yeah. unless you were on the list That's so this is the crazy this is the crazy part what i thought is that basically um the, the, that open air theater is actually open um normally for people to walk through every day you know so yeah. probably today as well you can actually go into even that seating area it's all open it's, it's public accessible mm -hmm. and the funny thing is during those days even the filming days it was also open during the day so it, during the day from i guess nine to whatever it was mm -hmm. open because it's just a big square and then the theater you can walk in go on the seats you know look at that yeah. look at that view of the theater in the, in the in the lake and even during the filming days it was open and then around four o'clock or uh, they started to just uh, usher everybody out of the area and then seal it off you know with like these fences and then you know around five o'clock we had to come in for 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 uh, the, the filming of that night because it was all night shooting actually we, we have to tell as well you know it was actually a yeah that, night. That, that's that's an important detail i, I was going to mm -hmm. say that it, it was every shooting day started at i think six six p.m yeah so nothing really happened during the day so every shooting day started at six p.m and went all the way, I mean, all, all through the night. I mean, I remember the final day, we, I think we finished at 5 a.m. or something, 5 a.m. Yeah, or 6 a.m. Yeah, I have the first night I've in my the diary from the day as well, at 5.30 or something, yeah, exactly. It was super late every time, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So a so couple questions real quick. All right, so your first, each one of your first nights, because it isn't night shots, um, tell me about that first scene, if you will. Um, tell me everything, like, do you go to a makeup room? Do you get makeup on? Do they look you up and down? If you're wearing your own clothes, are they straightening it out for you or giving you pointers? I mean, what 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 was that like? Anders, why don't you start first? Okay, well, I, the, 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 the initial memory I have is that there was so such a long wait because uh, so we have thousands, you have thousand extras in the building, so to speak. Everyone, of course, is not needed at the same time. So we were we were waiting in this lounge area, sort of sort of lounge area, uh, and you, you and and because you also belong to a group, I remember. So I belong to one group, and yeah, I remember mm -hmm. to one group. So we were called in, but I remember the first day for me was I waited. I can't remember now, but I think I waited like five six hours, and I was like, what what is happening? What, what? <laughs> this is no fun. <laughs> Yeah, so this, it, it really started like, yeah, you're right, like they, yeah. they put everybody in groups basically on these long tables in like a huge hall, like I don't know, I forgot what kind yeah. of hall, like tents or these huge tables, so every group was about 80 people, I guess, or something with one head, yeah. you know, you had like your teacher, you're almost like kids, you know, so you had like a teacher that, yeah. you know, this sort of guider that, that, that was your boss sort of, and then you were just waiting and um, like, you're, you're right, you just had to sit, you know, on these tables and just wait, I guess, you know. Yeah, and if I think about it uh, in, in retrospect, so to speak, uh, it makes sort of sense because if you remember the scene, I mean, uh, Green comes into the building <clears throat> with Elvis and he, you know, he walks through the, uh, the crowds in, in the entrance of the opera. So obviously they needed extras for, for um, for for I mean they took they took one one part at the time so they brought in people for certain certain uh, I mean for, for for part of the area and then they those people went out went out and then a new group came in so so there were different people as as they walked along the entrance yeah but so how it actually went up uh, what I what I wrote down as well in uh, for the first day is like. Uh, you come in, you go to, you You got a assigned group. And I also remember you had to put your phone into like a little um, plastic bag already at that time. So ah, they, yes, took the they took all the phones, they took all the phones. And then I have written that the first first day, actually the wait wasn't that long in the sense of like, you had to wait like an hour in that in the table, you sat around. And the, but then actually people were called into the uh, makeup and clothing area. So I already yeah. had my, my suit on, so I didn't have any um, costumes to, to put on. Uh, some people did, like a lot of women, um, some men even didn't mm -hmm. have a tuxedo, so they were all put to the costume department. But I was um, uh, sent to the uh, makeup room, um, and then they quickly look you over. So that, that happens with like thousands of people. This is such an amazing, uh, big organization. You saw how incredible it was. Yeah. Every single extra, even though, you know, um, you're barely visible in the, in the film, 
got like a, a personal uh, stylist uh, look over really quick though but they did do mm-hmm. everything and my hair was really long at the time I'm not sure if you remember i, was, I had really long yeah. hair um and they thought yeah that's too long you know so there was like a sort of head head guy so yeah okay cut that so i was put to like a little um you know there was like 10 hairdressers on a row you know um yeah. or makeup artists slash hairdressers and they quickly just cut that hair like like in, in like literally like five minutes or something they just cut it off uh, to like a well, I, I, I guess I guess we can say, Ramit, that, that both of us we, we felt like a star for like one second. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's uh, because cool. that that's where one of the one of the cute girls came to to check our hair or whatever. They so they did they did something. I remember also on me. Yeah. But you know, it took it took one second, and then they went to Dana Craig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. When you, when you yeah. guys are there um, and you're all this waiting, I mean, time goes by. Are they feeding you? Are they watering you? Like, what are they yeah. doing? Absolutely. We, we were paid, David. We were paid. Yeah. 60 <laughs> euros a day. 60 euros a day. Um, if you, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were paid. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I, I think I had eight, seven or eight shooting days. So I received, I remember, 400 something euros. Yeah, and for people, local people, that was probably one of the incentives of going into a movie like that, you know, to, to earn a little yeah. uh, extra. Um, yeah. But for us, of course, that was really just like, an, uh, I mean, it actually did pay for the hotels because hotels were actually very cheap there. Um, so yeah. it, did, it did something, you know. But um, I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't claim that we became rich from this experience. <laughs> <laughs> just, just rich in experience. But was the was the yeah. food good? Like, was I mean, is it like? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking like, was it just sandwiches yeah. or was it decent? C- catering, catering. It was, okay. it was catering. I'm pretty sure there was warm food there as well and yeah. drinks yeah. Uh, constantly. There was not. There was actually a lot of food and a lot of drinks. There was no uh, shortage of that. And that was probably also what we did during uh, the waiting times. Because yeah. like, like Anders said, there were different groups for different things. So at some point your group was called, you had to set up in a certain area of the theater. Like you said, for example, if the people walk on the stairs, so you guys all sat here and then somebody put you in a certain place. Okay, you look at this, you know, for the next you know hour. And then you just stay in that spot. And then they do the, the filming and then uh, that you just get ushered back. And it's true, not only that there's different groups for different scenes, but I also remember there was um, more than one filming uh, group of how you call it. There were, there were different um, locations where they were filming at the same time, sometimes yeah. or at least setting up. So they were, you know, because the director just walked from one um, camera to the next. But in the meanwhile, of course, they set up the one while they filmed the other, you know. So it was like a exactly. rotation of almost three filming locations at the same time. So that was also pretty interesting that they, um, uh, yeah. B- Blofeld's cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the cat, yeah, he's always here. <laughs> always sneaking in. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, Anders, tell me some of the scenes that uh, that you got to be in and did you see anybody of interest? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I was just going to add something to the previous uh, yeah. subject that uh, in, in regards to the food and their drinks. Because I remember it was great food, and and you know we, we could eat mm-hmm. or drink as much as we wanted. So uh, I just wanted to add that uh, I think you, Remit, and I we can we can um, acknowledge or verify the the fact what most many actors say when they when they when they get attached to a Bond movie that they are really taken good care of by the producers. Yeah, I think it, I think it all mm-hmm. also goes for the extras. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Even though the, the waiting time, of course, was was pretty tiresome, I think. But uh, apart from but that, the, I think the, 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 the waiting time for us, though, was, was 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 in a way fun because sometimes you know we walked out. I have a picture of of um, me and um, the guy that got me into the thing or alerted me to the new thing, and, and a German friend, uh, Jan Reuter. We're just standing outside, you know, um, the, like smoking a little cigar or something, you know, and like looking at yeah. the whole you know, production going on, which is great, you know, because you just see like um, mo- a crew walking around. You saw like a little trailer where some of the days Daniel Craig was in, which was all yep. like fenced off. So you, you, in a way, like I didn't mind the waiting time too much because you were not like, you know, like I remember also clearly that, uh, of course, it was really fun to be there with some Bond people mm. um, and we couldn't, uh, you know, plan with who we were there. But sometimes there were Bond yep. people that you knew fans. And a lot of people you talked to were just actually really not interesting at all because they were just local people and they had no interest in Bond at all. They didn't even care about it. They, they were complaining a lot also about like, oh, you know, we have to wait for this. Yeah. Oh, man. And I was like, the longer we stay on this set, yeah. I'm, I'm happy, you know, like really, like just stay here, you know, like Forever. I don't mind. Just, just wait. Hopefully we'll get into another shot, you know, we're, so we were, we're just... Yeah, we're, we're, com- we're coming to, to my personal experience from that later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm but, curious. Um, no, I was just going to add also that another friend of ours, uh, Gernot, uh, I, I forgot his uh, surname now, it escaped Wolf. me. Wolf. Uh, Wolf, yeah, Gernot Wolf. He he was also selected as, as an extra, uh, but he, he had a specific scene. He, he was in the, 
it was in the restaurant scene, you know, when Bond mm -hmm. runs through the restaurant scene. So they were actually rehearsing that scene, I think, for almost a week. Because yeah, that really... was a special scene. That was a special, yeah. and also another guy, Rudiger Wenkel, was also there. Yeah, right. That was that was a special yeah. group. Yeah. Because I remember when you when you said uh, because they like you said they were they were working simultaneously on different mm -hmm. scenes. So while we were shooting, for example, the entry entrance scenes, mm -hmm. they were rehearsing the kitchen scenes at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and also. Um, uh, Basically, the, every day the, there was like, you, I don't think you knew what you were going to do. And even every hour, you didn't know what you were going to do. That that was maybe the weird part about the waiting. You were just waiting, but there was no schedule or something, really. You know, it was not like, oh, yeah. I know I have to get on at three in the morning or something. There, there was nothing like that. So in that sense, it was very unclear. But like I said, for us as Bond fans, it was just a great experience anyway. So you don't mind. But uh, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and also you just, you, your sleeping habits just change. You know, I got up every day around like one o'clock in the uh, afternoon. Um, remember, I even went for went for a swim, so it must have been pretty warm because um, it was April in yeah, Austria, oh, but I guess yeah. I guess I guess it was pretty good weather. I mean, it was an the outdoor swimming pool. Yeah, um, the weather, so, weather was great. Yeah, so enough. during the day we were just meeting up, you know, having a dinner with like uh, the German fans or the Swiss fans, and you know, just go around and uh, yeah. Um, and also, also Brigands, uh, I think, organized. They organized various bomb themed stuff yeah. around the, around yeah. the town i remember was, because wow. that's true in town and you, you, you it was impossible to miss that there right. was, a, there there was, was actually a, a little like uh, exhibition in that uh, in that that, that cornmark theater where they had the audition there was a, a very small um exhibition of bond and uh, i think i remember some cars came by at some point some aston martins and uh yeah um, it's actually my, my friend siegfried, siegfried tescher uh, he's a German okay. Bond fan. He, he exhibited some of his personal stuff. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. All um, right. So let's is, is, let's, so, let's sorry, jump is, into the scenes because mm -hmm. I I'm dying to hear. I think I know some of them, but well, the the first scene we, we actually shot, I remember very clearly, is if you remember in the film, uh, Daniel Craig as Bond goes. Uh, 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 sort of above the main stage. So he's looking at the audience. Mm -hmm. And then when he goes down from there, he goes on the side of the, um, of the, where people are sitting. Mm -hmm. Th that, that specific scene, that was the first scene that was shot there. As far as I, as far as I, I, I mean, I have, I even have um, several of the call sheets here, so I, I can probably backtrack it, but mm -hmm. that, that was the, that was the first uh, scene that was shot there. And because I was, I remember I was sitting in the audience and I had Mr. White behind me. Yeah. Oh which, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously the, the general public uh, or probably had no idea who he was, but the, the Bond fans who were there, we, we all, when, we, when we spotted him, we realized, okay, he's back in this movie. Oh. And so those were big scenes because that were basically like the actual audience uh, members. Um, they couldn't fill up the whole theater because there, there were not enough people for that. Um, but they filled mm -hmm. up like certain spots that were going to be visible and they digitally added people later. But so I remember also being in that scene you know, where, where basically, um, I guess almost all the extras were in those scenes because they needed almost everybody. And then Daniel Craig was walking up the stairs on the side, um, you know, because exactly. like he's walking up the stairs from, from behind the, uh, the set. And that, that was just, for me, one of the main things I remember, just what is so cool about the whole experience, which is so unique, is that you just see Daniel Craig, which is already amazing. You never see Daniel Craig, of course, in real yeah, life. Well, we but saw, not only as, as Craig. No, exactly. You see him there, but you, you also see him as Bond. So he is James Bond. Like he's not just mm -hmm. walking around saying hi and giving autographs, mm -hmm. but he is as James Bond walking on that. You know, so that that that's that I remember is just it made such an impression because you just see him walking in your because you can't really look because you're just an audience member. Yeah. <laughs> Going there, yeah, I, 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 I couldn't agree more, Remit. I, I, I mean, I will never forget it. I mean, seeing seeing Dana Craig in character, yeah, on the on the first day of shooting when we came there, it's it was incredible. Yeah, that, that was really special. Yeah. As yeah. even as audience members, which sounds relatively simple, are they still giving you instructions like don't look at Daniel Craig or look at the yeah, stage yeah. and you know smile mm -hmm. or frown or. Absolutely, mm -hmm. they, they were they were they were instructing everybody. So you know, when when they were shooting, you know, they were um, uh, what what do they what do they say now? Um, action? No. What 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 are the words, Remit? <laughs> I forgot uh, the words. The, the instructions before they start shooting. Um, yeah, something like action. Um, uh, I feel, I, I'm not sure what that, what that would be. I forgot it now, but it was it was you know you, lights, camera, hear. action, or <laughs> exactly, exactly something like that. Yeah. Something, yeah. So we kept hearing that all the time. So we were we were instructed to look at the stage, 
So we were not supposed to look elsewhere. <coughs> we, should, we should just look at the main stage. And there was, of course, the opera going on because they, they had to replay that scene. The actors yeah. of the opera had to replay mm. that scene. There was actually an opera going on, and that you know the whole um, uh, is, is yeah, the, the, the live the, performance. Yeah, the, the poor opera singer. I think he, I hope he was good. He was well paid because <laughs> I don't know how many actually listened to him <laughs> <laughs> because there was so much else going on. But but one one important detail that you that you said before is that um, that we should we have to tell everybody because. Obviously, the stands can hold, I think, 4,000 people. But like you said, we were never more than 1,000. So in, mm. in the movie, there's a, there's, a, there's a panorama view, I think, mm. of, of, the, um, of the crowd, mm. which, 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 and then you look at it and then, oh, it's, so it's packed. It's a packed uh, stage. But, but actually, actually it's, it was never full. It was, we only sat in sections, and then they cut it all together, I think. Now, can you uh, see yourselves in the crowd? Uh, not really. Not no. in the crowd. That is hard. No. Like they, they have some pan shots of all those villains sitting in there, and of mm. course you were hoping you were one of those, but um, unfortunately not. No. Like so, oh. I remember one other scene that that was a, a lot of times it was those scenes, like on the, on the outside audience uh, area, but then also the, one of the main scenes was when when um, uh, Green comes in and people are just standing around, you know, and uh, before the opera starts basically, and that's one of the things I remember most as well, was standing there. Um, and that's one of the parts I'm finally visible in as well, where basically I'm, but it's very, very tiny, but you see me standing with my friend there, um, a German friend, a Bond fan, the only waiter, we stand together talking about something. And there, that was a good, you know, inside scene, basically, where I remember um, at least the bad guys came in, you know, so we saw Anatole Taubman and uh, Mathieu Amarik walking up the, uh, from the Jaguar to the, or the Daimler to the, to, to the stairs and stuff. So that I remember. But I think Andrew, you, yeah. you have you have even a you have a you have a really good shot in the film, I think, right? Yeah, well, I have three seconds of fame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, which which I might add is half a second longer than Dolph Lundgren has in A View to a Kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, that's a very important detail, actually. In this case. Keep keeping the Swedish hand up. Yeah, no, uh, no, I, I Matthew Almaric. I, I didn't see Matthew in action, but I saw him. He was walking around the set with his um, rucksack. Hmm. But he, he kept very low profile, I think. And uh, Anatole Taubman, I, I, I spoke to a little bit. Um, and of course, my, my ultimate moment, I would say, as a Bond fan, probably was when um, I received instructions. I, I don't know, David, if you want us to, if you want me to take, take you through this scene where, where you can actually see 100%. Me. Yes, yeah. please. OK, so, so uh, it's, it's actually just before Daniel Gregg goes into the toilet and kills kills the guy there and takes his air his earpiece it's just before that actually so first you the, the camera is behind Daniel Craig and then you can see me coming in from the from the right hand side we'll walk across the screen and then the camera switches angle so it's again behind Daniel Craig and then he goes into the toilet and I go out in the um, in, in in the stands but uh, and this scene of course is like I don't know five ten seconds in total in the movie but and I'm not, I'm not joking. But it took five hours to shoot that, wow. <laughs> which 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 made me wonder. I mean, Jesus! I mean, um, <laughs> what's what's wrong with the takes? Because Dan, you know, I, I don't know. I think it was fifteen takes at least. And sometimes Danny Craig mm. just you know said cut. Uh, he was not happy with something. Mm. And sometimes the director, because Mark Forster was sitting actually in a corner uh, behind a, a monitor, so he was. He was very laid back and just watched the scene. And then, like I said before, the assistant directors, they were the active ones on the floor. Right. So, um, and like I mentioned before, that uh, we, when uh, uh, one of them I, uh, is a friend of mine, he has become friendly to me afterwards as well. But I sort of knew of him beforehand. And um, he obviously knew of me. So he called my name and he said, come over here. And, and then I was, I was instructed to follow him and, and go and check this monitor where Mark Forster was sitting. And then like five seconds later, Daniel Craig comes in there. And then I, I just look, I, I was just focused on, on, the, on the scene. So I was just looking into the monitor and then I, I could clearly see myself in, on the monitor. <laughs> so I, I realized I was in the, in the shot, so to speak. <laughs> And then the uh, and then the assistant director uh, sort of instructed um, Daniel, well mostly Daniel, but also me that obviously because they were going to do this camera switch, the change of angles, 
So, and, and of course this, that was not a continuous take, it was, it was two takes. Right. So I was just instructed that, you know, don't, don't just keep going and Daniel will go around you. So, so, mm. and then back to, back to the shooting and then, and then, and then, and then I can tell you it was absolutely insane because then, uh, of course there were a lot of pretty girls there and uh, I, I, I'm not a girl's magnet, but uh, <laughs> I can tell you in this case, this was insane. <laughs> because I had like 10 girls who wanted to, to walk because everybody was walking had a girl who was who were they were walking with. But I already had it. I mean, I, I only connected with a girl that, that we would do the scene all the, over and over again. But since everybody figured out that I knew somebody on, who was, I mean, either the assistant director or Daniel Craig, they figured out, okay, he's going to be in the movie. Let's go with him. I think that's really right. I think it's, it's a funny thing. It's like, like we said, yeah. there's not many Bond fans there, but like the girls or no. people that were there, they were pretty anxious to get on the screen, funny enough, yeah, yeah. not just because they don't come for the experience. We come for the experience. They they were there to be a Bond screen, you know? So like you said, they were probably doing anything they could to uh, to get as close as possible to the camera. That was really funny. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. The, the insight here was they, they were definitely not Bond fans, but they were def <laughs> definitely desperate to be in the movie. So. Mm -hmm. But I politely declined and I said, okay, I'm, I'm walking with the same girl again. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise I ruined the scene. <laughs> if I take another girl, they have to reshoot the whole thing. Can you imagine Andrew's coming like right in front of Daniel Craig with like four women, two on each arm. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I wish, I wish, but. <laughs> so at that point, I mean, Anders, are you thinking to yourself, all right, I came for an experience, but I have a feeling this is like jumped to the next level because you're clearly going to be in some aspect of this with Bond himself. Mm. Well, I mean, uh, again, I go back to, to Guy Hamilton, what Guy Hamilton told me that you, you actually, nobody really knows, not even the main actors know yeah. exactly which scenes are going to make the, the cut. So even though I saw myself, okay, Daniel Craig was around, but still I didn't feel like, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I said, I, I said, maybe I, I, I might end up in the movie, I might not. Right. So I wasn't sure, but of course it was still, I mean, for me up to that point to get instructions with Daniel Craig, uh, just me as the only extra in there. Mm -hmm. And then of course that was sort of a highlight for me anyway. So I think also there was different, different sorts of uh, extras, I would say, I guess, or different classes almost, yeah. if you can call it. There was also some actors um, that were more prominently, like I think in the restaurant scene and some other scenes yeah. that were more put prominently forward on purpose so that, you know, it was not just everybody, just no actor, you know, just random extra. There were different levels of extras, let's say mm. that way. Yeah, because yeah, so, I, I felt I felt a little bit sorry actually for Gernot, uh, Gernot Wolf that I mentioned earlier, because he was he was he was not on the floor doing these things. He, he was only doing he was doing re rehearsals all the time of, of this kitchen scene. And when you see the kitchen scene in the movie, it, it just flashes by because that's something I really don't like with the movie. It's, the, the mm -hmm. editing is, is quite so you you can't really see Garnet. I, I felt so sorry for him because he was oh. he was rehearsing that scene specifically for for a week at least before they at shot. the time uh, yeah, at the time people that were in that scene were like oh you're in the restaurant scene that's awesome you know yeah, but then, exactly, then exactly, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I, everyone was talking about oh so you're in the restaurant mm -hmm. yeah that's great yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so you you have to wait seven months to see the movie from the time you do this. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind? Are you thinking like, am I going to be in it? I'm anxious to see how the film came out. Is it everything? Well, I mean, I, I was lucky actually to, to see it in Stockholm at the previous screening. Uh, uh, and um, I had no expectations. I was just sitting there. I, I was just happy with the experience basically. And, and, uh, yeah, same but, here. I think, uh, and then in the case I end up on the, in the movie, okay, that's great. but. Anyway, we still have the, the memories, but um, anyway, well, I, I, think, I just... The thing is also like, even when you saw it in the cinema, it all went so fast anyway, that first of all, you're experiencing the Bond movie. So that's a big impression and, and everything goes really fast. So even after I watched the movie, I was still like, well, that doesn't mean anything yet because you know, like, okay, I'm not like frustrated, but I knew that because there was never a camera here, but um, it, it took a lot much longer until you actually had a chance to somehow get a digital version of the movie to actually go through it um, frame by frame before you actually could even tell what happened, you know? So uh, that actually took even longer in that sense. Um, I mean, unless it's relatively big, so you, you could see yourself in the in, in the first screening or the second or whatever first screening, you know? On Andrew, the you saw yourself right away? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously I was I knew where I was, where I was gonna look, yeah. but uh, but I had actually friends who I who knew I was had been on the set, but I didn't tell them, of course, where I was. Right. Well, some of them actually did discover me anyway. But uh, 
anyway, that, that's it's it's a bo it was it was certainly a bonus to at least end up in the movie anyhow. But um, and I have one more story also about the like all the time we had like in between yeah. actually. I think the connection with all the Bond fans like we, what you have now with the Bond experience, you know, I think at that time was really fun too, where we just had you know um, all this free time during the day where where all these Bond fans met up. I think that was a big part of the of the whole experience as well, because like I said, a lot of people that were not even cast still came, of course, to see what was up, you know, and just uh, walk yeah. around town and uh, you know, were there just to see anything, you know, and um, and I remember also really cool. We um, went with Natalie Klut from Belgium. Uh, we once went to the hotel that supposedly all the Bond people were staying. So first yep. we went to one hotel, hoping hoping to see a glance of you know Daniel Craig and everybody. Um, I think the first hotel year it didn't work or, or somehow we went to uh, just just to really stand outside the hotel waiting you know literally for a few hours because we had nothing to do and then at some point there was a big uh, mercedes came by and the director stepped out and um uh it was olga kurilenko who also stepped out he, he had just picked her up from the local airport because she just arrived they walked into the lobby um so we followed them into the lobby and it was there was not many people around it was kind of like a small town and a pretty big hotel but there was no nobody walking there so we walked into the lobby and there was just like the director mark forster with olga kirilenko and then um, anatole taupman came out of the elevator um at that moment or was waiting there in the lobby i think and he somehow knew olga i think so they they sort of were hugging and be like oh you know like it was so nice to see you again and she just had a long flight and you know, literally, it was just me and, and Natalie, we were standing there and I think maybe one or two other people and we were just like looking at that, you know, and there was nobody else literally in the whole hotel. Yeah. And so we're like, at some point, we're like, oh, okay, can we take a picture or can we add an autograph and stuff like that, you know, so they gave some autographs. Um, and I knew Anatole, I didn't know Anatole Taupman, but a friend of mine at that time knew him, she had worked with him. So that was an opening for me. So I said, you know, we have this mutual friend, body blah, blah, blah. So I spoke to him for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we wanted to take a picture with uh, Olga, of course, but she was like, oh, you know, I just came from long flights from Canada or something. So I don't want to take a picture. So she basically yeah. went back into uh, when they, they, they went to the, the elevator and then went away, you know, but it was it was a very cool um, experience. And then later uh, the director came back out and I took a picture with him. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that was just so funny because there was just nobody around. Like there was no crowds at all. Like there was literally not even other people in the hotel. Like it was just like just them and us, you know, so it was. It was a funny yeah, atmosphere. I, I remember. I remember also uh, um, um, a friend from France, uh, Joel Villy. He was he was also there, and I think he met them also at the hotels. Uh, maybe some other day, but uh, Joel Villy was there, and also uh, Leonardo Born, mm. uh, who who I who I spent quite a lot of time with on set uh, Swiss guy. But um, yeah, that was a fun um, was a fun experience for sure. Do, do they let you keep your identification card? Do they let you keep your paperwork and things like that, that you have souvenirs? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, can't, I got to keep everything. And um, we, we, like I said, we were paid as well. So everyone collected their um, their per diem, so to speak, at the, at, the, at the last shooting day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I don't know what, what I had done, but I, I was very, very fortunate because there's actually another scene that we haven't really spoken about, but uh, if you remember in the film when, um, so there's this chase through the opera house and then they, they, they um, come out mm. uh, and, and then Bond throws the bad guy down yeah. on the car. Mm -hmm. So that scene, the scene that they, that was also another scene by the way, that they, they were rehearsing uh, for, for at least a week. So, uh, and, I, I, and if you remember there's two cars in the background and I'm actually sitting. I'm actually sitting in one of those cars. Uh -huh. So I sat. I sat there for like six, seven hours with a with a German German friend of mine who who who's it's actually her car. Uh, and we were just sitting. We were we were getting paid, and we were sitting there in this car <laughs> for seven hours. And we, we had front seat because we could see the complete filming of that whole scene. Oh my so, gosh. So, so here's another secret for you. So da Daniel Craig actually was in the scene, but he, he's only he's only he's only being filmed at, at the at the um, at the beginning of when they just come out because then he goes away and then the stunt guy comes in. So the stunt guy basically films the rest of that scene up to up to the point where he throws the, the other guy over the edge. But we, we have we could see all, all this happening in front of our eyes basically because that, that was the last day of shooting. Uh, and then at the end of that shooting, we were actually, me and this girl, probably mainly because of her, we were invited to the rap party, actually. Oh, wow. So, so and, and Anatole Taubman was there at, at the rap party. That, that's why I spoke to him most, actually. He was a very nice guy. 
and you know there were free free beers and free food and everyone was getting pretty drunk i would say <laughs> Nice. Including, I mean, that, that included everybody because that's a tradition, uh, you know, when it comes to film productions, yeah. when they when they when they finish shooting on a certain specific location, they, they usually celebrate that. With Is it every of... location they do a rap party? I believe as, uh, on the bonds, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah. they do. M My maybe gosh. Not. So if they go to like eight places, they have eight yeah. like drinking and eating and getting drunk. Yeah. And yeah, that sounds like a great party. <laughs> Well, they spend a lot of money on, on the crew, for, for sure. Yeah, so, they take so. care of them like a family. That's true. Yeah, that all right. So, so first of all, guys, I, I've just been like, you know, it's hard for me to get my jaw to drop. This has been <laughs> unbelievable. But my, my question is, that was back in 2008. I mean, do you now have this unquenchable thirst to be an extra in another Bond film? Is this something like, like you're driving to? Or is it because that you had it done? It's like, check i'm all good like where's your head uh, with it Remer, Remer can speak for himself but uh, for, for me personally i i was very happy with this experience i must say it was a nice nice memories and um it's sort it, so in a way it's sort of i you know i've been done that so to speak but a lot of people have asked me you want you want to do it again because a friend of mine w went to to uh, to the shooting of specter in mexico for example and he asked me if i want to join him but I said, you know, it's 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 great, but you you go. I I'm happy as, as it is. But um, but uh, yeah. there's really there's really quite a lot of waiting time, which I didn't really find that exciting. But um, but um, but for for me, it was uh, I'm I'm happy as it is, absolutely. Yeah, probably the same. Yeah, it was it was just such a great experience and such an amazing um, filming sequence because it was so many days. It was such a beautiful location. It was so uh, it was it was just there was a lot of good things about this particular. Um, uh, extra part, I think, and it's not. Uh, I'm not chasing it anymore in a way, and I guess because of that, I, I kind of had it in that sense. It's checked off. I mean, I wouldn't say no if uh, if I had another chance to do it for sure. Not, I would definitely go again. But um, it's it's definitely. I'm I'm totally happy that I did it, and uh, I saw the, the 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 extreme precision of a uh, of a bond production, which is just incredible to see. The the eye for detail, uh, the amount of people, the you know, the organization. That's something that always uh, stay with me. How incredible that is! Yeah, it's, it's, it's very it's, exactly Remit. It, it's very interesting. I would say it's not it's not all about you know seeing Daniel Craig in character. It's it's an actually very interesting experience. If you like yeah. if you like movie making and you haven't been on a set before, it's it's a huge experience. I would say, and I mean I haven't been to many 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 film shootings, but I, I, it was it's very interesting because you get another perspective of, of movie making when you see especially a, such a big production like Bond. But of course, it's like you said. I mean, it's like you say. If 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 the next movie is shooting in Stockholm and they need, <laughs> are they looking like me? Of course, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I'm going to make you say yes. My gosh, well, gentlemen. First of all, thank you because um, you know this was fun to kind of go down and hear all the details where the devil resides. But um, thank you too because I felt like I was able to vicariously live through you because I'll never have this opportunity. I'm an old man now. Um, but thank you for coming on and talking to us about it. And if you ever get another chance to be an extra, uh, we want to hear that blow by blow as well. All right. Well, thank you, David, for good, doing a great job as always. Oh, thank you. Never say so never again, time. David. You never know. Oh, oh I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, Remert, Anders, thank you so much. And this has been David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. And we will see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.